Hey guys, this is Daniel with Potent CNC, and I'm here with the updated spindle kit manual um, released on, uh, let's see, this is 311, uh, just a couple days ago, and the brand new uh, Onefinity uh, Modbus uh, control cable. This is also for uh, build botics if you've got one of those. So um, stick with me and let's, uh, let's dig into it. All right, I'm going to start out on page uh, 22 of the manual, and this goes through uh, 23 and page 24. Um, essentially, we're going to first thing we're going to start doing is working on our cable. So this is what a uh, wiring up the Modbus cable. This is on the VFD side, so I'm going to take this um, this part that says VFD. Set the rest of it down for now, um, and I'm going to. Of course, I've got this turned off completely. Um, I've got it wired up to a uh, paddle switch so I can easily reach over and stop it if I need to in an emergency or something. I hit start and power runs and, and all that. So right now I've got it stopped. No power is going to the system because if power was, these three lines would be, uh, these two lines would be, um, would be live and you don't want to be touching those. So we're going to take our uh, VFD wire here and we're going to have the red wire going into the left side the, this red wire here going into the left side and the right wire going into the right side here on this uh, tiny little breakout terminal over here on the left. So I'm going to slide this right up through here, place one of them. Now these are thick uh, connectors on there so that it's easy to uh, install, but you could use a, a pair of needle nose pliers or something if you need to. And I've already unscrewed them so it opened up the terminal completely. I'm just going to slide them in and tighten them down. And that's it. That's installs done on the VFD side. So let's uh, switch over to the back of the controller. Okay, I have a really weird angle here and everything's kind of got tight cables, so it's really hard for me to uh, pull this out. But in between the HDMI cable and the power cable, there's a DB25 connector. Um, I've got a generic one here, um, which I used on the other end of the controller. You can open that up in case you need to use any of the other uh, terminals or ports on this, uh, on this connector here. Uh, you're welcome to do so. The uh, three wires we're concerned with is number 13, 14, and the ground. Uh, the ground, of course, shields our, our, is the drain for our, uh, for our shielded cable here. So we've got the cable, the connector, right on the back in between the uh, power and the HDMI. All we do is plug it in, tighten down the terminal screws, and your installation is done. There we go. That's it. Now we'll uh, switch over to the harder part. We're going to look at the VFD and then the uh, programming for the uh, controller. All right, here we are zoomed in on my controller, um, on my Onefinity controller. This is 1.0.9. That's important. Um, Buildbotics and Winfinity are working on a new version of their controller software, which will include our VFD in the, uh, in the drop-down list, but we'll, more on that later. For now, if you're running this particular controller version, this is, what you're this is the process you're going to do. We're going to start out on the uh, page uh, 23 of the manual, um, starting up way up at the top. We're going to switch a couple of settings on our VFD first. So you're going to hit Mode. Go to P0.0.03 and hit enter. And we're going to switch that to a 2. Basically, that says we're going to start using the Modbus or the SG plus, SG minus uh, communications lines. That's the line to actually control the on off of the VFD. So hit enter. Then we're going to do this next setting right here P0.0.04. Enter. And we're going to change that to a 9, which basically says the exact same thing. Uh, P0004 is the frequency controller. So we're going to change it from this dial here to the actual P, uh, the Modbus line. So we're going to hit enter. We're going to jump up to... Uh, so because we are running a program, um, the program wants to start almost immediately whenever you... Uh, it's going to move the... the machine into position and immediately start cutting. So it's going to sit here, it's going to go, okay, I'm done probing, um, time to start my cut. So I'm going to spin my, spin my RPMs up, uh, let it spin up, 
um, give it a couple of seconds and then immediately move the cutter into position and start cutting. But that means if our VFD hasn't spun up fast enough um, for the type of bits we use in this in these spindles, um, and typically they're pretty small, usually a quarter inch um, at, at most, and maybe a uh, one inch uh, surfacing bit or something like that on these smaller spindles. <clears throat> Um, there isn't a lot of mass there to spin up, so we need to be able to spin this motor up faster and we can do that by a couple of settings that I've specified right here in the programming. First one is P0.0.11. Change that to a 4. Right now it defaults to a 20. We're going to change that to a 4. That way it takes 4 seconds for this thing to get the entire frequency range to get this thing spinning up faster. Um, so it takes 4 seconds from stop to full speed um, running on this on this particular spindle. We're going to do the same thing on the deceleration or the slowing down. We're going to switch this to from, um, uh, this is the next one, P0.0.12. Also change that to a 4. Now um, later on in the manual I do mention some tricks that you can make this even faster, like a 3 or a 2 if you get a a braking resistor. Um, I'll come out with a video later on that. I've got one on order. Um, it's going to be exciting to see that and, and see that in action. So we'll see. But for now, just switch it to a four, hit enter, and you're good. The very last thing you need to do, and this is specific to the Onefinity controller in the way that uh, and Buildbotics, in that the way it runs the calculations to determine how fast it should run. So the Program uh, the controller sends the signal over the line. It sends certain messages. It's sort of like a data cable is basically what the Modbus cable is sort of like a computer cable um, It's not like the PWM cable which actually fluctuates uh, the frequency of the actual voltage signal or the voltage Along the line which adjusts the frequency how more on that in, in those other videos, but on the Modbus Connection it's basically sending data packets across that line which tell the VFD what to do. Um, in this case, the calculations on how the BuildBotix Onefinity controller has to talk to this, this particular brand VFD, um, there are certain settings you must configure. It seems a little weird to configure them this way, but this is only for this use case. Um, other VFDs have very similar use cases, um, depending on which brand it is. Each brand does a different thing. Obviously, they're made by multiple manufacturers that can't really decide on a specific standard. So for our VFD, you're going to go to P0.0.07, hit enter, and we're going to change this from 400 to 1000. If you want to get into the math, um, just send me some questions. We, we can get with the uh, with Doug over at Buildbotics. He's an awesome guy. He's working on the uh, on on running those calculations. He can do it almost instantly. It's amazing. He's a smart guy. But um, for our purposes, just enter that one thousand into that zero 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 seven, and then we're done programming. You can hit mode to get back out. Um, we're done programming our VFD. We're now ready to start programming our uh, controller itself. And this, of course, starts uh, just slightly further down on page 23. Essentially, you're going to click um, the menu system there. You're basically going to get into the tool menu. Um, on the BuildBotix controller, it's a little different. There's a little menu across the top, and there's tool in here. But for the Onefinity controller, 109, go to the tool menu. We're going to change this to Custom Modbus VFD. And here's the other weird oddity um, in, in our setting. For max spin, you need to set that at 60,000. Now, the controller does calculations to determine what that means for this particular VFD. And with that 1,000 setting, the 60,000 uh, 60, RPMs here, and the rest of the settings, um, it will properly send it where it, the controller is calculating it so that it understands that 24,000 is the max when these settings are in place. So, put 60,000 in max spin. Obviously, there's min spin, zero, low high, low high. Um, and let's see, Modbus ID is one. These are the defaults up here, so there's no need to change these unless, um, unless you 
a mod bus allows you, it's basically a bus, it's a bunch of controllers. So you can technically control multiple controllers off the same two wires, just daisy chaining them. But for our purposes, for our little hobby shops, that's probably never gonna be the case. So the defaults here, one, 9600, and none are all perfectly fine. And of course, it's going to show status disconnected at first. And this is fully accepted, or uh, understood. So it's gonna be disconnected because we haven't entered in the program. We basically haven't told the controller how to talk to the VFD yet. Now, again, Onefinity and the BuildBotics, this is the most complicated um, setup for all of this. The PWM is obviously a lot simpler, but there's no back and forth communications. The Modbus control capabilities are far superior to PWM, um, but that, that's why it's really nice that you have a Onefinity and a Onefinity controller. So we're going to switch over to, uh, this is page 24 of the manual. Um, obviously, we went through all the settings at the top of the page, but now we're ready for the next page. And we're going to be hitting Customize here. And down here in this Edit Modbus Program Settings section, we're going to start entering this program exactly as it's filled out right here on the screen. So the very first setting is Frequency Read. So click Frequency Read. In the, in the Address setting, we're going to put 368. Six, four, and there's no value for this particular one. So the next one we're going to switch to is max frequency read. So max freak read, and in the address, this is simply seven. Then we're going to switch to frequency set. And this one is going to be, just double tap and it'll highlight the whole thing. Uh, let's see. Four zero nine six zero. Oh, I'm sorry, nine six one. <laughs> I'm going to switch to frequency right. Uh, no, forward right. I'm sorry. And in this case, it is four zero nine six zero. And in oops, in the value setting, we're going to place a one. Um, now we're going to go to uh, stop right. Stop right. Um, it's got the same number, 0940960, but in the value section, it's a 5. Next is status read. Goes status read 45056. Next is reverse right. Four zero nine six zero, and the value is two. And our very last setting is disconnect right. Four zero nine six zero. Oop! Come on. Uh, and it is a value of five. So uh, just double check all of your settings, confirm that what you've programmed into the system is exactly what's listed here. And when you're done, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, that's right, save is under the menu here. So click save, and that will move the program up to the active Modbus program. If you scroll up, you should see an okay at this point. This means it's ready to go. And we're ready to move on to our last section on page 24, which is automatic testing. So um, we're going to switch over to the control menu. Switch this to MDI. This will let us enter in commands and see the action. Now we're going to scroll it up just a little bit so you can see the speed and of over here. And of course, we've got everything all plugged in. VFD running. It's flashing, which means it's stopped. Um, we're ready to go. So the very first test command we're going to run is M3, which tells the spindle to start running forward. And of course the speed is S, so S is in, and then 6,000, tells the spindle to run at 6,000 RPMs. So we're going to hit enter or hit the play button, and you'll notice it switches to 
the, the VFD keypad shows 6,000. And if I were to actually test it, and I did, and I have, um, that is running at 6,000 RPMs. And of course, you can change the uh, RPMs again to 12,000, S12,000, and it'll spin even faster. And then, of course, M5 tells it to stop, and it is now in the stopped state. Um, and that is it. You are good. <laughs> All right, hopefully that made sense to you and um, you've got your Onefinity all running and, and ready to go and running for uh, automatic spindle control. This is the most impressive and awesome feature of a spindle kit and I'm super happy that I was able to bring it to you. Um, if you have any questions, uh, give us an uh, email over at support at pwncnc.com and, and several of us will uh, try to answer your questions as fast as possible. Um, as far as your cat cat I'm sorry your cam software so your cam software your wait, your CAD software your design software needs to know that you have a spindle um, and you can if it knows you have a spindle and a couple of settings about that spindle then it will know to enter those G code commands into your files that you produce now each software is very different um, at this point, you need to dig into your software and ask your software experts. I'm not an expert on every software. I'll try to come out with a couple of videos on some software that I am very familiar with um, and can actually be used on multiple, uh, multiple machines um, using this very simple software. But if you've got something like um, um, uh, some of the more complicated software, um, be sure to reach out to those experts. They can tell you exactly what it is. You simply need to know that they, you have a, um, a spindle attached to your machine and it's max speed of 24,000. Um, and that's really all you need. But once that's entered in, as you're entering in or specifying which bits to run for which, uh, control, which paths in your CAD software, <laughs> um, it will inject those G-code commands in there, which means you could actually scan your files and look at, um, you can actually find the M3 commands or the S commands. You can actually find them right there in the G code, which tells the spindle to do its job um, at certain times. So again, if you have any questions, support at pwncnc.com. Um, like, subscribe, do all that, all that stuff, you know that. And um, remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. <laughs>